The media is completely controlled by the left and the far left in Portugal, and this is not an overstatement. Recently, I talked about how the Prime Minister António Costa lied on live TV when he was being interviewed by a TV station called TVI. TVI itself had recently showed a report by a reporter called Ana Leal that there was all sorts of equipment missing from the Portuguese hospitals, even the most basic stuff. Yet, when interviewing the Prime Minister, and the Prime Minister claiming that nothing was missing and nothing was expected to be missing in the future, the journalists, in air quotes, from TVI decided not to pressure the Prime Minister on the lie that he had just said. Anna Leal herself has been on the limelight recently because she has claimed that Antonio Costa himself called TVI to fire her when she was reporting on CIRESP a few years ago. CIRESP is the emergency system in Portugal used for communication during an emergency, a system that failed miserably during an actual emergency in the 2017 fires. The contract for CIRESP was signed, of course, by António Costa when he was the Minister of Internal Affairs of the first government of José Socrates between 2005 and 2009. So Ana Leal was clearly being quite inconvenient for the socialists and especially António Costa. And what happened recently? Well, her program was completely cancelled and TVI said something very similar to what Rui Rio said recently. Rui Rio is the president of the Social Democrats and someone that has been essentially siding with the government in pretty much everything. And he has recently said that criticizing the government in a time of crisis is not patriotic. And TVI said pretty Pretty much the same thing to justify the cancellation of the program from Ana Leal. Basically, they said that it's not appropriate to criticize the government in a time like this. Censorship like this in Portugal is not unusual. In fact, just a few months ago, before the 2019 elections, we saw another program, Seixtaj Nov, being censured by the government because they were about to air a report on shady dealings that the government was promoting with lithium in Portugal. So the government pressured RTP, which is a state-run TV station, to not air that report before the elections. It only aired after the elections. And this is not something that has happened only recently. When Socrates was in power, this was quite normal. Censorship and persecution of journalists that dared to criticize the socialist government was met with some sort of consequence. And it reached a point where the control of the media by the socialists was so much that José Socrates could even pick the journalist that was going to interview him. It's not the media outlet that's going to pick the journalist to perform the interview. No, it would be José Socrates handpicking the journalist that was going to interview him. That's how controlled the media is by the left and the far left and specifically the socialists in Portugal. Now, why am I talking about all of this? I'm talking about all of this because recently, and in the past few months, the government and the president, Marcel Rebelo de Sousa, were pushing for a sort of state subsidy of the media. They wanted to pay media, supposedly to keep them working. But obviously, this already raises many questions. Why would the government be supporting the media, essentially subsidizing the media? Isn't this something that is going to end the so-called independency that the media should have from the government? In Portugal, these questions don't really matter because, again, we are living in a dictatorship and so even more media control is necessary, especially from the president. The president, Marcel Rebelo de Sousa, is someone that has benefited from the media propaganda for him. He has high approval ratings precisely because the media has made his campaign and his presidency like a reality show. He does something and there you have the cameras making propaganda for the president. In fact, one of the things that the president said he was going to do when he won the presidency was that he wanted to end the homeless problem in Portugal. Not only has he not done that, but the number of homeless people actually increased since he is the president. So he does nothing. He is the worst president in Portugal. And of course, it makes sense that he wants to have the media completely subservient to him because he has no ability to do anything good. And so he needs to have this constant propaganda. 
And the same thing for the socialist government. They have only been successful, with air quotes, because the media spreads lies about Portugal. The media spreads the socialist propaganda every single day. And this state subsidy is just a way to make sure that this control is kept, that they always have their narrative pushed by the media and no one can dissent from that narrative or they will be punished. And in this case, punishment will mean that they will simply not get the proper subsidy value. So the total value of this subsidy was revealed not long ago. We we're talking about 15 million euros. And only recently we saw how this money is going to be distributed. Obviously, this came as no surprise because all those that are radically supporting the government are getting the biggest numbers. We're talking about millions of euros. The companies that hold SIC or TVI or Espresso or JN or DN or Publico, all of them are getting huge payouts, huge millions of euros, hundreds of thousands of euros. And these are already the ones that are most radically defending the government in every way. SIC, for example, I would call it the Portuguese CNN. They are essentially doing everything they can to spread the socialist propaganda and criticizing, for example, Trump. Trump is criticized on a daily basis in SIC. So all of these companies got huge payouts in this state subsidy, while others didn't get as much money. For example, one of them is Observador. It's a newspaper that I've talked about before, which is quite biased to the left. They are just not radically biased to the left, as SIC or Espresso or Publico are. So they got an extremely low value. We are talking about less than 20,000 euros. After seeing this value, apparently, the board of Observador decided to refuse this support at all because it's ridiculous. The amount is so low, especially when compared to all the others. The funny part came today when the government corrected the value that was supposed to go to Observador. Observador was claiming that that value was so ridiculously low that they are not even going to accept that, but the government is now claiming that they made a mistake. They wanted to say 90,000. 90, not 19. So that was the actual value for Observador. But Observador had already said that they are going to refuse it, so it's going to be interesting to see if Observador is going back and claiming that, oh, okay, if it's 90,000, we are going to accept it. As far as I can see, until now, no one has said that. They are still refusing that support, and 90,000 is still quite low compared to other media outlets that are radically supporting the government. So this payout is essentially media control. We are talking about bribes from the state to continue the propaganda for the socialist government and for the president, Marcel Rebelo de Sousa. It's about corrupting the media to spread even more propaganda. If the socialists were doing this in the backstage before, now they are doing it in front of everyone. They are not hiding it. They are giving away taxpayer money to the media that does their bidding, to the media that spreads their propaganda. All those that don't fall in line or aren't as radical as the government wants them to be in spreading this propaganda, then they will be punished and they will not receive a lot of money. This is the state of Portugal, this is a failed state, and this is just another confirmation of that. Anyway, I hope you like this and I'll see you next time.